Hi everyone, it's Nell with Little Yellow House Crafts and I am back for an update video. Um, this is a little sooner than I usually update. I usually update about once a month and it's only been maybe two and a half, three weeks, but I have a quiet moment. My husband took the boys to a playground, an indoor playground, to get some wiggles out because we are still having frigid temperatures here in the Midwest. So I have like an hour of quiet. So I am taking advantage and I'm going to do a video. I have a lot to show you today as per usual. I've been doing a lot of stitching. I also got in a lot of my Christmas haul. So we've got some stash to look at. Um, but first things first, I had um, a subscriber comment on my last video that I neglected to show you all a bump picture in my last video. So we're going to do a quick little baby bump update. Um, we are now at just under 30 weeks. I'll be 30 weeks in like two days. So here we are. Ready? Get the bump. There he is. That's the baby bump. We're at 30 weeks and he is a wiggly little guy. Um, but we're feeling pretty good. I, um, we did have a little minor scare earlier this week. We thought that I might be in preterm labor. So I went off to the hospital and turns out we're fine. Um, no preterm labor. It was, I'd gotten a little bit dehydrated and kind of overdone it the day before. I had just been on my feet a lot, doing a lot of lifting and things that I really shouldn't be doing. <laughs> when I'm pregnant but um, it just I started having a lot of contractions and they went away we're fine baby's not coming anytime soon but it was a good reminder to take care of myself to take it easy and drink more water so <laughs> we're good um let's see I don't even know where to start because there's so much to show you and it's good it's it's fun Let's start with some finishes. I had two, and I apologize if this is gonna shake a little bit. I am in a new spot. I, this is my new office slash craft room, and I realized the lighting in here is excellent. When I close the closet doors, um, and in here is all my cross-stitch storage, when I close the closet doors, it makes a great background so that like I have a window right across from me. The lighting in here is much better than anywhere else I've found. So this is probably gonna be my new filming spot from here on out. But you are, I'm filming on my iPad and my iPad is sitting on my ironing board. So it's not the sturdiest table. So if it jiggles a little bit, I apologize. Let's start with some finishes. These first two are partial finishes, but I'm counting them. This one, last time I did a video, I was kind of halfway done. This is Sheep in the Meadow by Country Cottage Needleworks. I'm not gonna take it out of the bag, but um, this makes up the center portion of my Little Sheep Virtues project. And let me show you. I did take it off the Q-snaps and gave it a good iron so it's not nearly as wrinkly as last time you saw it. There it is in its entirety. And then I'll bring Sheep in the Meadow in a little bit. There you go. There is Sheep in the Meadow. And um, if you have seen this or if you are stitching this, you know this chart has to be altered just a tiny little bit in order to fit in this space. So Pat Carson, bless her, did a great job of making it very clear about what you need to omit and what you need to change in order to make this fit. Um, the chart, as it's charted, is a little bit longer, so you have to omit some of this grass here in the center one of the flowers gets taken out and the word the, there used to be the word the all the day long. Um, so you take the out, but the, this, it still makes sense. Sheep in the meadow singing their song softly and sweetly all day long. Still makes sense. It just doesn't have the word the. Um, I stitched it as charted. I did change the colors of the house and the flowers. Rather than doing purple and white, I went with purple and yellow. And I just thought that looked a little bit more cheerful. So that is my first partial finish. I finished Sheep in the Meadow. So I am over halfway done with this piece now. <laughs> I have one more Sheep Virtue to do here on the other side. And then I go down to the bottom row and do the last five. And those stitch up really quickly for me. You know, each one takes about two evenings for me to stitch. Um, and that's if I don't get any stitch time during the day. So 
this is very possible. I mean, this is very conceivable. I could have this done this spring sometime. I don't know if it's going to get done this spring. I'm not going to hold myself to that because I'm having a lot of fun stitching on a lot of things right now. But I'm really pleased with the progress I've made on that. Um, and I am excited to keep going. That, that big center section feels like a big hurdle to get over. And so now I just have six more little sheep virtues. And those are are quick to stitch. Um, next finish, another partial finish, but a finish nonetheless. Um, let me pull it out, the chart out. Last time I showed you this, I had this particular chart about halfway done. And this is on my Lizzie Kate Less Is More Flip It series. And I am stitching them all on one big piece, as shown right there. And last time I showed you this, I had the first three done. I had been working on Wine Less, which is in this chart, Wine Less, Breathe More. And now this chart is completely done. I finished Wine Less and I finished Breathe More. So I'm stitching this on a 32 count cream Belfast linen by Zweigart. This is another one. I took off the Q-snaps and gave it a good iron, but it has been folded up in a bag, so. There it is. Wine less. Last time you saw it, this was all done, except I had I had a little bit more of this pink tulip to finish. Finish that and finish Breathe More. And I will say, with these charts, these big blocks of color, the green, pink, and the yellow, there's a few more of them coming up. Those are a bit of a bear. <laughs> That's a lot of stitching. It just, I have to spend one whole evening just filling in those colors. Um, without even getting to the, the dark brown lettering. So it is a bit of a bear, but I really love the colors in this. I love the sentiment behind it. I'm really having fun stitching it. So that is my Lizzie Kate, and that is being stitched with all the called for threads. It's a mixture of Gentle Art sampler threads and Weak Style Works. And that is another one that's like halfway done now. Woohoo! Making progress because now I've got two charts done and two to go. There are only four charts in this Flip It series. In a lot of her Flip It series, there's six, and I actually bought this one partly because there were only four, so it was a little less expensive to kit up. Um, you only have to buy four charts, and I'm really liking that one. So that was my second finish um, in the last few weeks. Both of those are partial finishes, but I'm counting them as finishes because they are their own charts. These next two <laughs> were sort of unintentional. They were kind of spur of the moment. I just decided I wanted to go ahead and restart this one, which is my Country Cottage Needleworks Cottages of the Month, January. Um, a couple videos ago, I told you that I had decided to stop what I had been doing with them, um, which was stitching them all on one big piece of fabric. I just wasn't happy with it. And so I stopped and I cut up um, a bunch of new fabric to stitch them all individually. And so I went ahead and restarted January and got it done. However, I changed the colors. So last time I stitched this, I stitched it in all the charted colors. Um, you can see they're kind of aqua, blues, um, kind of light, bright, a little bit icy looking, and I decided to start using some of my Victorian Motto sampler threads, which P.S. you are going to see in this video I am obsessed with and am now changing everything <laughs> to Victorian Motto threads, but this is my January. So you can see I changed this to be much more muted in the blues. So here's the aquas of the original. And then here's what I did. So both of these blues are Victorian motto threads. Um, this lighter one is called Beach Cottage and this darker one, I can't remember what it's called. Sorry, it's left my, my mind. Um, the green um, in the tree and the little branches on the border is also a Victorian motto thread. And I'll get a little closer, you can see some of the variegation in there. It's very pretty. That is a Victorian motto thread called Aussie Parrot. And then the browns are um, some other over dyes. I didn't have the right color browns in my Victorian motto threads yet. Someday I'm hoping I will as I continue to collect. 
So this one is Weeks Dye Works Pecan, the lighter brown that you see in the door and windows. And then this dark, dark brown of the roof is Crescent Colors, not Crescent Colors, Classic Color Works Caterpillar. Um, in the original chart, it's a much lighter kind of gray brown. Because I was doing more bluey gray, gray blues, I didn't want to go with a gray roof, so I did Caterpillar and I like that a lot. You can really see the variegation in January in that blue. It, I'm just going to say it again, Victorian Motto sampler threads are gorgeous. They're lovely to work with. They're super plump and they stitch beautifully and the colors are just to die for. So that is my color conversion of January and I really love it. I really, really like the conversion. I liked stitching it in the called for colors too. That was what I did the first time and I liked that. I think I like this even better. This is stitched on 28 count Kesha linen in um, Dirty by Zweigart, which is what I will be stitching all of these little cottages of the month. So that was my third finish kind of an unexpected surprise finish. And then this last one, I didn't even know I was going to stitch these this year. I was watching Stitching Mommy and she, in her 2017 wrap up video, showed these that she had been working on all of last year. And I decided right then and there, I'm gonna stitch those. <laughs> so I pulled up the Snowflower Diaries blog and I started the Joyful World Sal. Um, if you don't know, it's a freebie series that Snowflower Diaries put out in 2016. So it's been out for a few years and they're beautiful. They're monthly charts. They have kind of a primitive style um, and they're all animals. It's, it's beautiful. And this is January. I chose to stitch it on a blue fabric. This is um, 28 count Kesha linen in the color Millennium Blue by Zweigart. And this is January, and I loved stitching this. I loved stitching this. Um, stitching Mommy did all of hers one over one on 28 count, and they are just adorable. They're just little bitty. I'm stitching two over two on 28 count. <clears throat> Excuse me. And once again, I swapped out a ton of my Victoria Motto, Motto sampler threads. So I'm going to get a little closer, scoot my chair in, and try to show you. Um, the orange of the fox is um, pumpkin spice mix. This dark brown in the border and the, um, the word is shaded chocolate. This light green is fern frond. And this dark green is called Greek olive. And then the only other colors in here are white and black, which are just DMC. This is B5200 and 310. And then there are a few little tiny spots of yellow, which are just a random yellow DMC I grabbed. I don't even remember. I think it was 3822. I don't know. But anyway, love, once again, love working with those Victorian motto threads. I think this is beautiful. I love it. I love these little eyelets down here on the bottom that are worked in the two different greens. Um, so I decided I'm going to stitch all of them. I don't know that I'm going to try and get them all done this year. Same with my cottages of the month. I'm just going to stitch them when I feel like it. I'm not holding myself to any sort of schedule. But I did go ahead and cut up all the fabric that I needed to do the Joyful World. So what I did is I pulled out all of my 28 count cashel linen in my stash and just started assigning colors of linen to certain months, depending on what looked good with that particular month, because every month has different colors in it, obviously. So for example, this is a piece of Confederate gray, and this is the one I chose for February. And you can see I have some cobblestone in here. Um, there's some rue green, there's more Confederate gray, there's more millennium blue, I think that's December's. Um, <clears throat> a lot of the wintry ones look really good on like a deep blue. So anyway, I have them all cut up, I have them all zigzagged, and in this bag labeled and ready to go. I don't know when I'm going to stitch them, but I really loved stitching January, and so I'm going to keep working on the Joyful World Sal. They're free, and they're beautiful. I love finding free charts that are just so elegant and so generous of her. Um, if you didn't know, she has, sorry, she has charted each month's name in like six different languages too. So if you are not an English speaker 
or if you, you know, want to stitch them in other languages, she has them in Spanish, French, Italian, I want to say Dutch, a whole bunch of other languages. So you can stitch your Joyful World Sal in whatever language you choose. I obviously will be going with English, but just in case you didn't know. And that is um, the where you can find those patterns is on her blog. And if you just search the Snowflower Diaries, Snowflower being one word, um, it'll pop right up. And it's all on her blog. So those are my four finishes. Two of them were kind of partial finishes of bigger pieces and two of them were small little January finishes, but I enjoyed stitching them and I'm having a lot of fun. I also had um, two other new starts that were not finishes, but I, that I want to show you. The first one was my um, new year new start, which I talked about in my last video that I was going to do this and I did and I'm loving it. This is Plum Street Sampler's Liberty's Welcome. And this is what the design looks like. And I love it. It's huge. Stitch count is 349 by 211. It's not a small piece, but I am stitching it. Oh, and this is how I do my charts. I don't make working copies. I never have. Um, I don't, I just don't see the need, but I do like to keep my charts nice. So I put them in a page protector. I just unfolded the chart and then slipped it in and I'll hold it way back so that I can see what I'm doing, but the chart stays nice. And there's my color key. So anyway, that's what I do with my charts. And here is what I have done. Basically, I have completed the whole left hand border and finished almost the whole top left page. So there it is. And we've got a little trailing thread because I was almost done with this thread, but the page ended and I wasn't just gonna cut that off. It's silk. I'm gonna use it until there's nothing left. But that is what I have done. So this, all of these motifs up here make up most of the first page. There's a little tiny bit of something right here that I'm not quite ready to fill in yet, but that's the first page. And then I went down and took the border all the way down to the bottom. And what you see right here is this tiny little start is the start of this border that runs across the bottom. So that is as long as the, the, as the piece is. And it's beautiful and I'm obsessed with the colors. It's absolutely gorgeous. Here's the picture again for comparison. So you can see I have this all done. Not quite ready to start on the house yet. And then I took it all the way down to here. Speaking of the house, I had a moment of panic. <laughs> you can see in this model stitch, the color of the house is this very light taupe gray, which is fine because they stitched it on this very light cream colored fabric. Very, very light fabric, so it shows up just fine. I'm stitching my piece on more of a taupe color and I bet you know where this is going let me show you here is the color and yes I bobbinate my silks <gasps> all the stitching police have moments of panic I know I know I've heard it all I've heard it all oh you're gonna kink your threads I bobbinate my silks whatever so this is the color NPI 981 that is charted for the house It's like an identical match for the color of my fabric. Like, so identical, you can't even tell where I've stitched. This color is in the center of this blue um, little star and also some of these stripes in this motif right here. And it looks like nothing was stitched at all. It just looks like blank space of fabric. But I stitched it and it's just an identical, look at that. I mean, it is like, as close as you can possibly get. So I can't stitch the house in that color as charted. Um, there is this color that's included in the chart. This is 641. And this is only used in a very few little spots in the chart. Wherever there is one of these blue star motifs, you can just barely see in the center, there's some of this lighter blue gray. That is 641. As far as I can tell, looking at the chart, that is the only place where this color is used. And there's only like 
maybe eight of those stars in the whole piece. So I think I'm going to stitch the house in this and I'm hoping it'll look okay. Um, I will do a couple of rows and if I don't like how it's looking, I'll pull it out and I will order a different silk, um, a different NPI that shows up better, maybe a, a darker tone of the same kind of shade of taupe. But I'm gonna try this. I think this will look really pretty as a house color. And since it's not really used anywhere else in the pattern, I like this color. I think it's nice. So I think it would look good to have a little more of it. So we'll see how that goes. But just keep that in mind. If you want to stitch this piece and you choose to stitch it on something kind of taupe colored like I am, this is 40 count vintage pecan butter by Lakeside Linens, you may have to change the color of the house. <laughs> I didn't realize until I was like, down to here I had done all of this and I was going down and I was like <gasps> too late to change my fabric color and I don't want to anyway I really like this fabric I really like how the colors look on it so we just had to figure out something else for the house <laughs> so anyway that was my new year new start and let me just plop that down on the floor and we'll keep going my last new start which was just a new start yesterday <laughs> was I had had so much fun with my January cottage of the month that I decided to go ahead and start February. I just wanted to do something else small. So this is February's cottage. I have stitched this once before, again, um, and I stitched it in all the called for colors. I had to make some slight adjustments because of dye lot issues with the pinks, but essentially it was in the called for colors, which you can see are very light and bright and kind of bubblegum-y. So I went ahead and changed the colors again excuse me, not because I didn't like them. I liked stitching in those colors, but again, I wanted to play with my Victorian motto threads. So I changed my pinks to be a little bit more mauve-y. These are my pinks that I chose. So you can see very bright and bubblegum pink and I chose more mauves, which actually it's kind of early 90s mauves, but in a really, really pretty way. I really like how they look. So these are Kate Spee's Trillium, which I think is a flower. Someone correct me if I'm wrong. And this color is oh so pretty. So those are my pinks. Um, there are There is one green that's used in the grass and the leaves. And that's another Victorian motto thread. I'm using Haunted Forest, which looks amazing with these pinks and has a little bit stronger variegation so you can really see it. Really pretty green, looks super good with those mauvey pinks. And then for the tans, there's like a darker tan in the flower pots and a lighter tan in the roof. Um, for those, I think it was charted just for DMC, but I thought, what the heck, let's keep doing over dyes. I'm using two weeks dye works. I'm using hazelnut and bright leaf, which again, oops, look great with those colors. So, and then the only other color in the piece, I think is just B5200. I think it's just a white. So that is my February color scheme. Let me put those away and I'll show you what I've done on it. I just started it yesterday, so I don't, it's not done, um, but I have most of the house finished other than the roof. <laughs> so let me show you and you can see how pretty those pinks look together. Let me move that thread out of the way. There is my little pink February house. So you can, I'm working on the door right now. I'm filling in the doorway. So it's a little bit darker, a little bit more muted, and a little more mauve -y. And I really like it. I think it's going to look so pretty when I have the flowers going up along the sides in those same pinks. I think it's just going to look great. So I'm having a lot of fun converting things over into my um, Victorian Motto sampler threads. And... I'm really liking the changes that I've made to those charts. Having stitched both of those once before in their charted colors, I think it's just fun. Play around. There would be nothing wrong with chart with stitching them in those colors again. I liked them, but I want to play with my new threads. Speaking of which, really quickly, I did come up with a storage solution. I was talking about in my last video how I couldn't just keep them on a ring in a gallon size Ziploc baggie <laughs> because I keep accumulating more threads. I'm part of her Floss of the Month Club. And so every month I get 12 new threads and they're 20 yards a piece. That's a lot of thread. And I was just, I did not, I, I, I didn't have a good solution. 
So I was watching Leslie's most recent video, Under the Sea Fabrics, and she had been talking about how she just redid her um, organization for her silks, and she went to Joann's and got some things there. And so I thought, you know, I'm going to go wander around Joann's and see what I can find. And I wanted something that would give me adequate space to grow my collection because I, I intend to continue to grow it, but um, I needed it to not be super expensive. And this is what I found. This is a brand called Snapware. You can see right there. And these are just little bins that snap together. And they are spacious enough. Let me just. They snap apart so I can access. There's my greens and yellows. Um, and they're spacious enough that there's room for me to grow my collection in there. Um, if. I ever get to the point where I outgrow the six of these little bins, I can add more on. You can continue to just stack them. Um, I got these for a screaming deal because four of these little bins were part of a separate set that was part of their Christmas storage. It's exactly the same. It just had a green top with a red handle. That's the only thing that made it Christmas, but it was on clearance for five bucks because they're clearancing out all their Christmas storage. And then I bought this one, this particular lid and handle that came with two bins, and that was also $5. So this whole thing cost me less, just over 10 bucks with tax. Um, great, inexpensive, it keeps them out of the dust. I can still see what I have in there. And then I just use my label maker. So I have my reds and oranges, yellows and greens, aquas and blues, purples and pinks, peaches and browns, and neutrals and grays. And they look pretty. Um, they're Like I said, they're out of the dust. They're easy to access. And because they're organized by color family, they're really easy for me to swap out. So like with February, I, know, I knew I needed two pinks and a green. So I just went into those bins, my pinks in there and my greens in there, and found colors that looked good together. Done. So if you're looking for a good storage solution, oh, there's the, there's the Christmas lid. This is what... Just this is what made it Christmas storage. It's exactly the same, and they were on clearance. So if you're looking for a good storage solution for some overdies um, that you don't want to bobbinate or anything else you don't want to bobbinate, this is really inexpensive. And use coupons, use sales, use clearance, and you can you can get good deals. So that is my new storage solution for Victorian Motto Threads. Okay, we're already at almost half an hour guys. I have haul. I have kind of a lot of haul. I don't feel bad that I have a lot of haul. I feel bad that this is going to be another long video. I just seem to be incapable of making a video that's less than like 40 minutes. So let's start with what I got myself for Christmas. I bought myself something and you're all going to laugh at me. I don't know why I hemmed and hawed over this for so many months. I think I was afraid that I was like jumping on a bandwagon or I just had FOMO and didn't want to miss an opportunity or something. But I did finally bite the bullet and just ordered it. And I'm so glad I did. I don't, I don't know why this just wouldn't leave me alone. It's like they tell you if you want to buy something to like wait a week and see if you still want it. This was like, I waited like two and a half months and it was still nagging at me. And so I bought it. It's the Hands Across the Sea Sampler. This is the, I don't know how to pronounce it. Ufendel, Uffendel, Ufendel, no idea. I need to go watch Nicola's video again. But this is the Ufendel, we'll say sisters. Isabella the older sister and Anne, and it contains both of their samplers and you've seen it a million times, so I'm not gonna talk about it a lot um, because every other floss tuber has also gotten this and talked about it. But I will reiterate what they said, that this chart is incredibly gorgeous. When I got it, I took it out of the plastic and sat down one night and read it cover to cover. <laughs> read all the historical information. She has like seven pages of historical information. It's amazing. And then read the pattern and just slowly flipped through it and it is just it's so well thought out and you know everybody has been saying that but it's true it's a fairly substantial book you can see two charts in it don't know when I will stitch them I do intend to stitch them someday um, but I bought this more with the intention of just wanting it in my collection 
which I guess means I've crossed over into the world of cross stitch collecting, not just buying things that I want to kit up and stitch. <laughs> I probably will stitch these someday, and when I do, I hope I want to do them in the Overa Swa silks because I mean they're just gorgeous. But I bought this as a collector's item, and I'm not ashamed to say that I did that. I am so glad to have it. Um, if you are wanting this, all I can say is you better jump on that quick because they are selling out fast. I bought this from Sassy Jack Sticker Stitchery in North Carolina. They still had a few left when I bought mine, but they're going fast. So some people, some other floss tubers have mentioned other LNSs where they have found a few copies. So do some digging. You can probably still find it, but it won't be around forever. And they are a limited edition release. I don't think they intend to a special and limited edition chart. I don't think they intend to re-release this anytime soon. So that was my Christmas present to myself and I love it. I'm so glad I have it. The rest of this is my giant one, two, three stitch haul. Um, I got some um, gift certificates for Christmas. I always ask for gift certificates to one, two, three stitch for Christmas and birthdays. And sometimes people give them to me. No one has ever actually bought me actual stitchy things because I think they feel intimidated. Um, but gift certificates are easy and that's just as good in my opinion. So I bought some boring things. I bought some floss boxes, some of these little ones, which I'm gonna talk more about this in a second. I saw a little sneak preview. Um, which are nice. I bought some needles. I bought one piece of fabric I needed for a different chart. I think it's in this pile somewhere. But the chart, the first two charts I bought were the last two that I needed for my early Americans. So I had the first seven and I bought number eight and number nine. So that's Patrick Henry and Molly Pitcher. So that is ready to go. And I will be talking about that at the end if we're not at like an hour. <laughs> If there's time, I will talk about that project. This is the fabric. Here's the random piece of fabric I bought. This is just a piece of 32 count Belfast in light mocha. And I bought this because I was not happy with my fabric choice for my Lizzie Kate Christmas Spirit with Charm Flip It series. I want to stitch it all on one again. And the fabric I had pulled from my stash was like a natural raw and it was too gray. It was too gray for how warm and vibrant like see how warm those browns and reds are and the gray just didn't look right so I went ahead and ordered the called for fabric I already cut it down and zigzagged it so it's cut down to the right size and when I finish my um, less is more series flip it series by Lizzie Kate this will probably be the next Lizzie Kate I do so bought a piece of fabric for that um, this was something that I've wanted since Paulette's last video Paulette Stewart of Plum Street Samplers in her most recent video, which was in September or October now, um, showed this. This is one of her newest ones. This is the Heritage Sampler. And it's gorgeous. It's all Americana and it's all bright and vibrant and happy. And I love it. So I bought it. I've been waiting to buy it until I had some money to spend at one to three stitch. So I did go ahead and order that. I also ordered the called for fabric. Um, which is a 36 count. I don't have any 36 count in my personal fabric stash. Um, most of what I have is 28 and 32 count. And so I ordered the called for fabric, which is 36 count vintage exemplar by Lakeside Linens, but it is back ordered at one, two, three stitch, which doesn't happen very often. Usually they won't let you buy something if it's out of stock. This was, they were expecting a shipment in and it said it was expected to ship in seven to 10 days, which I was fine with. Um, and then their shipment got delayed. So they sent me the rest of my order and they will send me the fabric at the end of this month when it comes in, which is fine. I'm not intending to stitch this anytime soon. I need to finish my Liberty's Welcome first, my other Plum Street, but I did buy it and I bought the fabric. I will probably convert this into Victorian Motto threads again. Um, this is the called for threads are all classic color works and weeds dye works, but I like my Victorian motto threads. So <laughs> when I get ready to stitch this, I'll probably do some converting. Next one, this was sort of a random, the rest of this is kind of impulse shopping, which was fun. I haven't been able to do that in a while. And this is just something that popped up and I really liked. This is Little House Needleworks Mayflower Landing which I just thought was really cute. Again, Americana. Um, you could argue that it's sort of Thanksgiving-y because it's the Pilgrims, but it says, 
Let liberty reign and freedom ring within the heart of man. Let faith and hope rise high and sing in this, the promised land. And then it says Plymouth Colony, 1620. And this has some meaning for me because I actually have ancestry that came over with the pilgrims in the 1600s. I have um, a family line through my mother's father that goes all the way back to, um, I think, I think my great, 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 great grandfather, however many greats back, was born in Penn's colony, which later became um, Pennsylvania. So anyway, so this has some kind of family heritage meaning for me. And for this one, I decided to, to be brave and use some of my picture this plus fabric that I wasn't sure about. This is my um, picture this plus 32 count. Ah, what is it? 32 count. Oh my gosh, it's escaping me. It's the one that everybody loves and stitches on all the time. Nope, it's completely gone. I have no idea. It's the one I was nervous about because the modeling is so intense, but I think it's gonna be okay. I think with this particular piece, I think this will look really nice on it and I'm trying to be brave. So I went ahead and cut down my fabric to the right size for this particular piece. I'm sorry, I can't remember the name. Legacy, oh my gosh. Picture this plus legacy, that's what this is. 32 count. So I'm going to be brave. I don't know when I'm going to start that, but I loved it. Next thing. Um, I was really wanting some springy Eastery things. I was tired of Christmas and I was tired of boring January with no holidays. So I got some Valentine's Day things. Um, the first one is Country Cottage Needleworks, our love nest, which is just adorable. There's little birds and little house and it's pink and green and it's peachier pinks. And so I just, I love that. So it's not overtly Valentine's Day, but it felt Valentine's Day-ish to me. So I bought that and I went ahead and kitted it up with a piece. This is from my stash. This is just a little piece of 32 count Joblin in ivory. I thought that would work just great. So I cut that down and that's ready to go. This next one is also sort of Valentine's Day-ish. It's not really, but it feels sort of Valentine's Day. And I just wanted it. This is Barbara Anna Designs Love Never Fails. And this one just cracks me up because it has kind of a, a dark kind of gothic romantic feel. It's very romantic verse and like, you know, it's a, it's a lover's sampler, whatever that means. But they look like they're out of like a Halloween pattern. I just... <laughs> I love it. So I don't know. I might actually stitch this in the called for colors. I might change the colors up and make them a little bit more vibrant and cheerful because that's kind of my my taste. But I did discover that I have a use for my earthen fabric. When I got my picture this plus order in, I had no idea what I was going to use this earthen fabric for because it's so pink. Perfect Valentine's Day piece. So I'm going to play with some threads, probably some of my Victorian motto threads and play around until I find a color scheme that I really like and I will stitch that on earth in. So that is Love Never Fails by Barbara Anna. And the last three patterns I got were all Easter because I just wanted spring in my life. So the first two are by Brenda Gervais um, with Thy Needle and Thread. The first is Easter Parade. And again, Brenda Gervais is um, she favors more of a primitive style, primitive colors. I will probably brighten this up. As beautiful as this is, this is too muted for me for Easter time. Easter to me is bright springy colors. And so I will probably again pull my Victorian motto threads out and brighten this up just a tad. Um, but I love this pattern. I think it's adorable. And I had this piece um, of 28 count rue green linen in my stash, which I think will look really nice for an Easter piece. So that is Easter Parade, kitted up with fabric from my stash. This is another Brenda Gervais um, Easter Peep Parade, very similar name. And again, bunnies and chicks and an egg shell wagon, which is just so cute. And I actually really liked how this one looked on the dark brown fabric. So I did go ahead and get a small piece when I was placing my order of 36 count bark brown Edinburgh linen by Zweigart. 
but I will probably also pull from my Victorian motto threads when I stitch this and I'll just stitch it on the dark brown. I just think it looks really cute on the dark brown. It pops. The last chart I bought. This was a splurge. This was expensive to kit up. I never buy things that are this expensive to kit up. Well, that's not true. I do buy silks occasionally, so that's a lie. I never buy these particular items, at least not very often, because I don't stitch with them very much. But I bought my very first Glendon Place, and this is eggs all around. It's this beautiful kind of mandala of Easter eggs, and it's incredibly colorful and vibrant. Um, it's charted for all DMC for the cottons, with the exception of this green. This green is an over dye, which I'll probably use one of my Victorian motto threads. But it uses a ton of Krynic. Krynic? Krynic? I think it's actually pronounced Krynic. I've always said Krynic, though, so it's kind of hard to break the habit. It uses a ton of Krynic um, and a ton of beads. And I never buy Krynic in beads. It felt so weird to be buying huge amounts. I just don't stitch a lot of the things that require those. I don't stitch a lot of the elegant ladies. I don't stitch a lot of Mirabilia's or um, what else uses a lot of Krynic and beads? Joan Elliott's. I, I don't stitch a lot of that stuff, so I don't have a lot. I'll show you it in a second. Um, I kitted this up with a piece of fabric from my stash. This is just 28 count Monaco, Charles Craft Monaco. I think I bought this at Hobby Lobby like years ago. It's a nice big piece. Um, the cream color I thought would be a great color to set off the brightness of the, the Easter eggs. And here, this ridiculousness, look at how pretty this is. These are all of the crinics and beads. So just really quickly, let's go through them because it's fun and I can. It's my video. First, we have a hot pink. I'm not gonna tell you all the names because if you wanna do this chart, you can find out the names yourself. We have an orange. We have kind of a, a muted gold. And then we have a bright, bright yellowy gold. Here is a gorgeous, very sparkly turquoise blue. My hands are too small. There are nine Krynix in this. Here's two more, a dark kind of um, royal blue and then this lavender. Look at how beautiful and sparkly this is gonna be. And then the last two, eh, the last two are a limey green and kind of a copper color. So in a row, it's so rainbowy and beautiful and oh, the pink's falling down. I don't have enough hands. There you go. It's so rainbowy and beautiful and sparkly. <laughs> this is so out of the ordinary for me and I'm so excited. <laughs> so those are the nine Krynix. And then we have 11 packs of Mill Hill beads. If I hadn't had gift certificates, there's no way I would have ever bought this pattern. But I had gift certificate money to play with and I just thought, what the heck, I'm doing it. So we've got some like peach um, beads, some gold. Again, I'm not gonna tell you the numbers, but we've got pink and blue and kind of a mauve. Oh, I can't even hold them all. Then we've got an ivory, kind of a brighter peach and a lavender. And then we've got some greens, we've got a teal aqua green like a spring green and a yellow green so this piece is going to be incredibly sparkly it's going to be incredibly vibrant and beautiful and the springy colors just bring me so much joy because i'm so tired of winter now we're we've been so cold here in the united states and i think everybody's just done <laughs> done with the crazy winter weather sorry i'm trying to put these back um so that was my my big splurge, um, oh, although this was all a big splurge, but this box full of my bright crinics and look at all those pretty beads and oh my gosh, this is going to be a fun one. I don't know. I, I hope I will start this in the next couple months because this is just too much fun and I'm eager to get going. Um, 
that was my Christmas present um, from various family members. And then the Uffendel, Uffendel sisters was my Christmas present to myself. So there you go, guys. That's my update. 45 minutes, man. I'm just, that's just how I roll. Hope you're all having a good January. January can kind of be a blah month sometimes because it's after Christmas and before any other good holidays and it's just cold and dreary and I don't know, at least for me, January can sometimes be a blah month. So I hope that you're staying happy and warm and if you're down in Australia where they have record heat, I hope you're staying cool. <laughs> Um, hope you're finding lots of time to stitch and I will see you guys in a couple of weeks, maybe a month. I don't know. Depends on when I have a lot to update you with. So take care everyone. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.